Hello everyone. We're going to start with our first few vocabulary words and this is going to cover first epistemology. And epistemology is the science of knowing. It's what you know and how you know and it varies and is covered in philosophy and in science and human sciences. But important here is to recognize that everybody learns differently and everybody knows differently. But in research methods is one way that we come to know things. And so that's epistemology. Next is methodology. This is how we know or how we figure things out. This includes what you do and how you do it. If you're going to use a research lab, if you're going to use a questionnaire, all the different items you may use or things you may ask. So this course really covers how to look specifically at methodologies of science and research. Next we have variables. Now in any sort of science experiment, you always have variables. In your biology classes, you may have looked at light as a variable and how it affected the growth of a plant. Now in social science, our variables all have attributes. For example, if gender is your variable, then it has the attributes of being either male or female. In the studies that you look at, you will see all sorts of variables. For example, in a research article, we can see all sorts of variables. For example, here we have uh, priority is the variable, and these are some of the attributes or, or parts that make up that variable. Atmosphere is another variable. We also have grade as being a variable. You can see two different grades here. Frequency is a variable. If you come in further into papers, again, you'll see different variables. Perceptions of family meals, again, age and sex are variables. So in our studies, almost everything we're talking about is a variable of some sort. Now, later in the class, we'll get more specifically into different types of variables. But right now, the, we're just looking at what a variable is in general. Now we have a paradigm. A paradigm is a more general word. In some of your other classes, you may have heard about theories, models. Those are all paradigms. Uh, paradigm explains how you think about the world, why you think about the world in that way. Every research study you'll look at will have some sort of paradigm or basis for which they build their research. And that can often be found in the introduction section. Back to the example we were just looking at, here in the beginning you can see the background. Now it doesn't list a theory specifically, as you may have learned in other classes, but what it's talking about is the social relationships and the importance of social relationships. Now they're assuming in this study that what happens when you're together as a family will affect other parts of life. So what happens while you're eating a meal together may be beneficial to members of the family. Now that's systems theory, as you may have learned about. And we also have in here socialization, which is part of different theories, and role modeling, which is part of theories. So even when they don't specifically list a theory, the paradigm is that basis for which they're building the momentum behind the research study or article. Next we have a study population. When you're doing a study, the population is the larger group. In that study we were just talking about, the title was adolescents' views of family meals. It, so it's talking about all adolescents, probably in the United States, as their population. However, they didn't actually ask every adolescent in the United States. And so then they have a study sample. Another example here, if my population were all college students, I can't ask every college student in the United States any questions. So my sample may just be Penn State students. So the population is the larger group you want your study to represent, and you hope that it represents. At the end of this class, we'll be able to figure out whether or not it really does represent your study population. 
Next we have respondents. Respondents are those people that you invited to participate in your study. You see here we selected this one and this one here and they actually participated. Sometimes they're just called participants, but they're also called respondents. This is how we identify those who are actually participating, separate from those who may have been invited but said no.